Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we are proud to present TypeScript for Zim. So let's go take a look at the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we'll go into the code section, see what all this is about. Scroll down, past the template, past the help, past the tools. Oh, in the tools, there it is right there. So we've got Atom, which is our editor of choice, and then TypeScript. And I'm going to show you TypeScript in Atom. It's probably easier to describe TypeScript when we're actually looking at it. So let's just go into some code now. Uh, that link, by the way, will uh, the blue link there will click and open up a zip file. And here's all the, the stuff in the zip file. So we'll go through some of these files. One of them is the Zim html file which is our start we're going to show you the template but using this thing called typescript and as we go we'll describe what what that is so we're bringing in create.js and we're bringing in zim but then we call a zim.js file so we don't have the rest of the the rest of the, the zim code here we're just calling a remote uh, javascript file and we don't even edit that remote javascript file instead we're going to edit a, a zim.ts file so here's the zim.ts file right here. And this is a TypeScript file. So what that does is it gives us the types of everything. You see how it says the scaling is going to be a string. And there's a string. If I try and put a number in there, 44, it gives me an error saying 44 is not assignable to a string. So this will make sure that we put the right type of object into a variable. And that's one thing that TypeScript does for us. Even here with the frame, uh, it requires a frame in there. And here's the frame. Here's a second thing that TypeScript does for us. As I roll over anything that has been uh, has had these typing set up in Zim, it will give us what parameters need to go there. So let's try another one. If I roll down there, there's a button. So if I go over the button, let's just check this. What if we tried to put a label? Say, hey, make it a label. And now it will say, type button is not assignable to type label. Great. What if I put in label here? Label, like that. Uh, it's still giving us an error, and this thing's red right here, and it says argument of type 140 is not assignable to parameter of type string. So we have to put a string in there. Um, yeah, so that's the typing, and let's roll over this label again and see what we get. Now I know that's going to be small for you, but I'll read out some of it. The first thing there says config or text question mark. And that would, if it were text, it has to be a string. Now, with Zim, we've got a bit of a complex system in that we can often pass in either parameters, one at a time, like showing here, or we can pass in this configuration object, so a single configuration object with property names that match the parameter names. So we've set that up in TypeScript as well. So this first one is saying, is just a reminder, anytime we can do that, it will say config or and then text. So if we do text, it will need to be a string. The next parameter says size. Oh, note the question mark to it as well. That means it's an optional parameter. So uh, we don't have to put in size. We don't have to put in the text. Uh, we could just make a new label with nothing in it, and that would be fine. But if we do pass in a size, it needs to be a number. The font needs to be a string, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that might be Boolean. Uh, it, it could be anything, um, really any, any type of object in there. Now watch what happens. Let's, uh, let's turn this into a config object. So if I delete that and go um, and start our config object, now when I roll over the label, it knows that there's a config object there, and so it's adjusted itself saying, ah, you've got a config object, then inside that you would need text as a string, size as a number, font as a string, and with those question marks, those are optional. So isn't that neat? Um, the Zim TypeScript has allowed for both those systems, which is a little bit complicated to do. Okay, uh, let's undo that though. All right, so that's a, a little bit about what TypeScript is doing for us, and it's really neat to be able to roll over something and get all of the parameters. A button is, as a matter of fact, maybe one of the longest sets of parameters. So 
Um, some of the other ones are much easier to read than that three or four lines of parameters. Okay, but it's you know it's nice. We don't have to run off to the documentation to see the parameters anymore. Now, uh, how does all this work? How, how do we get this going? Uh, well, we up top of our TypeScript file, we say, hey, we need to go to the Zim typings right here. And that's this file right over here. It's also provided for you along with the create.js. So if you can see those, these are the create.js typing directories as well. So we've included those in the zip, which is slightly dangerous. You might need to update those from time to time as well. So just remember uh, create.js maintains its typings. There's a famous place for typings that you can go just search it on Google and you'll find the GitHub for all these typings. We'll put the Zim typings there as well. Uh, but first we want you guys to run through it a bit and make sure that it's working all right and then we'll post it up for the rest of the world. All right, so that's a little bit about this file. We'll go take a look at that in a minute. Um, one thing I would like to say is at the moment we are using global. So that means we've got new frame. We didn't say new zim.frame. We can do that if we want. And all the typings will be there for that. You see, that, that all still works and it'll work the same way. And a zim frame has the same signature as a zim, as a, a sort of a, just a frame. So it's all right if we put a zim frame into a frame. That's, um, that's fine because the signature is exactly the same. So in other words, we can use the Zim or we don't have to. Now, most people in TypeScript are probably ready and used to using namespaces. So they would, uh, they might want, or you might want, if you're using TypeScript, to be putting Zim in front of things like that so that we don't conflict with other things. So if you want that to be, then you go over to the Zim file and you type in true here. And that that means that Zim will no longer make uh, just a plain frame out in global. It will only make a Zim dot frame. So that's what this means. But TypeScript, even though, let's, do we save that? <coughs> save that up. Uh, TypeScript will still allow us to um, not put the Zim there. So if we want TypeScript to also give us an error saying, no, 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 sorry, that doesn't exist, then we need to go into this TypeScript definitions file and just delete all of the globals. So in the readme file here, the readme comes in a zip, it describes what you need to do to go in and delete all those globals. All right, so are we ready to take a look inside? Oh, let me just show you how this runs, first of all, and show you, uh, prove to you that it actually works. And for that, we'll go back and set this to false. And we'll come back into our TS file. We don't need the Zim there. Um, well, let's just run it. So first of all, this is a TypeScript file. So in Atom, you F6. So F6. And there it gives me a little emit success down there at the bottom. And what that did is it just updated the Zim.js file so that it um, is normal JavaScript. So now note the typings aren't there because JavaScript itself doesn't have typings. That's uh, the point of TypeScript is the fact that JavaScript doesn't have this in the language where other languages like Java and C and so forth. Uh, I'm not sure actually if C has it. Uh, Objective C, blah, 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 um, have uh, required the types like this. Actually, yeah, C does. So uh, let's just see if that change happens again. Why don't we change the frame color to yellow? There's yellow. And now we F6, F6. We come over to the Zim.js file. We look and it says frame color yellow. And indeed, this JavaScript has been made. If we go to the Zim thing here and view it in a browser, open in a browser, there's the yellow backing in our Zim TypeScript globals test. Neat, huh? So it's really, it, 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 you just hit F6 basically. <laughs> F6 and it saves it out and then you test your thing. So it's really not any harder to use uh, from a publishing standpoint, which is nice. Um, what else do we want to see? Oh, we should see how to get TypeScript into Atom. There's that as well as what's in this file. Let's just pop out and show you what is required then to get it into Atom. So in Atom, you can 
choose Packages and then Settings View. I've got it open right here. Packages, Settings View. And then I've gone into specifically the Packages. Um, I've, I have a bunch of packages, but I've just typed in the words. Oh, you, don't, you don't need them. There's my bunch of packages. So I go down. The two packages that we need are, are this package and this package. Atom-TypeScript. Or there's probably a couple other TypeScript uh, for Atom as well, but I've chosen the one that was the most popular and seems to work just fine. So Atom-TypeScript. And to get that, you just hit Install and type the word Atom-TypeScript or just even TypeScript, and then select it and install, and it takes a minute, not even a minute, to install it. Um, it does say, hey, along with atom.typescript, you need the atom-ide-ui. So if you read about uh, this here in the TypeScript, then it will um, say you've got to also install this one. So just do a search for atom-ide-ui. It gives UI elements as well. So those two were installed in about a minute. And uh, that's it. And so we're off and running. Now our TypeScript file, I've provided an example here in the zim underscore ts. There also needs to be a TypeScript config file that says uh, what target do you want. So we're, we're targeting uh, ECMAScript 5, so JS5 instead of JS6. So if you have that config file in there, you can set that up to target different things. Okay, let's close that down. So we talked about the settings on how to get TypeScript started in Atom. In other words, I got TypeScript started in Atom in about five minutes, maybe even less, uh, which is cool. Okay, and there's stuff about that in the README as well, most likely. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the TypeScript file that we've made. That's found in a Zim folder here, along with the CreateJS TypeScripts as well uh, are in there. So the TypeScript file itself, these are the definitions. You shouldn't have to do any changes in here, I don't think. Now, uh, one of the things just down here says fixes. If you have any issues, please contact us, uh, either that or on Slack. So uh, there's a lot of things in here. This is <clears throat> How many lines is it? It is whomp, 2,700 lines. And we're going to go through each line. So that's a lot of stuff uh, that <laughs> has potential to go wrong, I guess. Hopefully it's uh, a, a bunch of it's automated. It's about 1,000 lines of independent different things that had to be typed specifically. Uh, most of it copied from the docs, but then the types had to be manually put in there. Uh, and then our system is automated to uh, to handle things. First of all, we're we're needing the create JS easel preload sound JS and tween JS to be there, so we've provided those. But it may be that you uh, go off and get those from the the proper places in the future. Here's some instructions. It's good. Uh, Let's see, what do we want to look at? Um, the Zim V object can be any of these three things. So throughout, this is uh, we've defined a certain type called a Zim V that allows those things. The Zim display object, rather than saying create JS display object everywhere, because many of the objects that we pass in, uh, we might just want to be a either a Zim J a Zim. A display object which extends a CreateJS display object or a CreateJS display object. So if we just say, since all the Zim display objects extend a CreateJS display object, uh, for instance containers and so forth, um, even shapes extend a Zim container with, and the Zim container extends a CreateJS container which extends a CreateJS display object. So we could have just put Create JS display object everywhere, but that might have misled people to think that they had it had to be a Create JS display object rather than a, a Zim one. So what we've did, done is just uh, provided an interface of um, a display object that extends that, and that way everywhere down below we can just say, "Hey, a display object is needed," and we don't say specifically a Create JS or a Zim because either is fine. Um, here is the all of the methods that are on a Zim display. So these are the Zim fourth methods that we added, such as drag. And there's the drag with the config, and there's the drag 
or sorry, a drag with the uh, each parameter um, outline there, a definition for it, but also a drag with the config. See how that's slightly different? In this case, that's the parameter name. There's the parameter value. This means or, so it can be either a rectangle, a CreateJS rectangle, or it can actually just be an object with the following, an X, which is a number, a Y with a number, a width, and a height with numbers. Next, the over cursor, which is optional, has to be a string, the drag cursor needs to be a string, etc. So those are the normal parameters for a drag, right there. And that's going to return this. What that means is it will return the object and for chaining. And that's important because when we go to chain, if we started chaining and we didn't tell TypeScript that don't worry, uh, whatever object you're putting that on, that's what's going to be returned. If we didn't include this, it wouldn't, um, wouldn't work. So you wouldn't be able to chain, for instance, in your TypeScript. Here's the drag with the config. So this is it, called an overload. It might fit this pattern or it's going to fit this pattern, which is just one parameter of a config with this object right here. And that object goes all the way down to the end. There's the end of the object right there. And that's it, just one parameter with a config. So those two, are, those two patterns are allowed. There's no drag, no drag returns the object, etc., etc. So all of these are the Zim fourth methods with the exception of loop because we actually can't loop on anything but a container. Um, and then there's properties as well. So there's the properties. Now this is called to -doop, to -doop, an interface and it's a pattern that will need to be mat matched by any Zim display object. We'll have to have these things. And unfortunately it doesn't, it's not extending. So this is not an extension. We um, in other words, when we get down to do the container, we've got to put all these things again. Now, when we put all these things again in a container, uh, and we put them all again in a bitmap, and we put them all again in a shape, and we put them all again in a movie clip, um, so they need to be repeated. But after that, when we have a, a button, for instance, which extends a container, then we do not need to put all of these things again because the button extends a container and all these things are in the container. But as uh, an interface, it's handy because what we're doing is automating this. We're putting the, in our, in our we've, we've got a sort of a base file that has um, everything abstracted that, you know, is, is being used. So uh, then we just copy this interface into the container, into the bitmap, into the um, shape and, and so forth. We just copy everything that's in this interface and that way we know that those things have exactly this interface. So it also means that when we make changes, uh, we can change it in one place and then sort of parse this thing, run a parser on it, and it copies it out to all of the right places. All right, so let's move along here. That was uh, one of the things. Also, all Zim shapes also have a certain interface. They have those things for the shapes. The components have these things, not very many in this case. All right, be careful. These are always global. So these are being declared as always global functions right here. And then underneath, we talk about the, the, the globals. And so there's, uh, when it comes for you guys, if you ever don't want to use globals, say you want to remove all of the, the globals so that you have to use the Zim namespace, it is from here that you erase. Do not erase the Zim wrap globals. And I've said that in here, so hopefully you'll see that. These globals were intended to be global outside of the namespace, no matter what. So these ones are duplicated. These ones are global. You see here's a declare a function called shuffle. Uh, it's not in a namespace, so that means we'll be able to use shuffle. But what that means is that this word shuffle will overwrite any other library shuffle that uh, also uses globals. Now, if the other libraries put a shuffle in their namespace, it won't overwrite that. But if there's anything else out there that is global called shuffle, um, these will conflict. So that's one of the issues with global.
So what we've done with the parser is we've declared all of these things only once as globals in our base file. And so they're only declared once as globals, but then we copy the globals into the Zim namespace as well. So we've got all of these duplicated as either being global or being in the namespace. Uh, but once again, since that's done with the parser, there's no risk of error, and it's also more efficient. All right, so there's us declaring all of the things that go into the general functions. Here's the display. One of the differences with Zim 6.9.0, uh, so that this works properly in TypeScript, is we've had to uh, extend the create.js stage. So now we have a Zim stage and a Zim stage GL that very simply extends the create.js stage, but gives us uh, read-only width and height. Because otherwise, <laughs> it's a bit of a pain in the neck. We do have a width and height on the stage that are read-only on, on a Zim stage. And we didn't uh, really have to make a new Zim stage just to, to put those on there. We just put them on there. But now with TypeScript, you wouldn't be able to use those at all if we didn't uh, go through the extension of the stage. So we back in Zim, we extended the stage. There's also a loop, so you can loop through all of the elements of a stage using the loop. We may bring in some of the some more of the Zim fourth functions into the stage. Uh, the stage is fairly new. There have been, on occasion, some other ones that might be handy to have in the stage, but uh, for now, loop was uh, all we put in there as well as the read-only width and height. So here's the container, and this extends a create.js container, so it's going to get all of the typings from the create.js container as well, which is really neat. So that's obviously important. That's things like X and Y and add child and uh, that kind of stuff, set bounds, get bounds. And it implements the Zim display. So that means we have to have exactly all of the same things that are in the Zim display, uh, which was set up above. Do you remember that? The interface that was set up above. So that gets all of that, as well as um, some of these. Oh, this is the, that's the end of the Zim. Oh, that was the end of the Zim fourth, but it also gets these other ones. The container specifically gets looping, caching, and cloning. Here's the sprite. Um, it gets all of the Zim fourth as well to there, but it also has run and various other things like that. Okay, so you're to get the idea. Uh, let's just move along here to, here's the circle. The circle extends a container and implements a Zim shape. So the circle is much smaller because it extends a container. All of the things that are in the container are given to the circle. So we don't have to repeat them here. But we do have to repeat the, the implements of the Zim shape. And so this is the area that gets uh, uh, pasted in here by the parser that is implementing the Zim shape. Isn't that neat? So that's a circle. Uh, rectangle, same kind of deal. There's a squiggle. It gets more things. And uh, by the way, the constructor here in the base file, there's only, a con there's only the one line for the constructor. And then when we parse it out, we basically copy this exact same line, but put it in the format of, uh, we put only the word config there, put it in the format of the object. So again, we did not have to copy both these things. Well, sorry, we did not have to type both these things. We typed only the one and then copied that in the parser. And there's the end of the shape interface. So this is the stuff from the shape interface. And then we have the own, own specific things for that. Neato, huh? We're almost there. That's a checkbox example. Um, Again, here it's implementing the Zim components, so these things came from the component interface. Here is uh, the Zim namespace, so this is important right here. This is us declaring. In the past, we had been doing that as well, declare, declare, declare. So everything is declared, that says globals. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we are declaring the namespace Zim, and then basically we do it all again. Now there are some unique things in here that are only in the namespace that we ran into. One, the Zim scroll X and scroll Y functions. Unfortunately, that's already used by the window, so we can't actually use those in the globals without it conflicting. So uh, it works fine in Zim, which is just sort of overridden that without any 
any, any concerns. But if you ever did want to use scroll X and scroll Y uh, back in traditional JavaScript, uh, you wouldn't be able to unless you turn the namespace on. And, anyway, that's no big deal, uh, I don't think. And Blob <laughs> turned out Blob was another one. Darn, Blob is one of my favorite names. And it's sort of like, oh, really, man? So that means Blob in the global uh, for it to work in type space or type. Um, TypeScript uh, cannot be a global variable. So in TypeScript, you can't just say, give me a new blob. You got to say, give me a new Zim blob. So my apologies there. What can you do? I suppose blob is a type of data. I mean, I didn't know. So uh, TypeScript, new Zim blob. And that's it. So those, oh, <laughs> not quite it, window as well. We have, and I knew this one was going to come back and bite me probably. Uh, the window class. So the Zim window class, you need to use new Zim.window. And now are you thinking, hey, maybe I'll just always use Zim and then I don't have to worry about which one's which. It's really just the scroll X, scroll Y, blob, and window. Those are the ones that have to use the Zim. The rest of them all turned out fine. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the specific ones that are in the name in the in the namespace only. So that's the end of the unique. And then the parser is going to bring in all these other ones. So these ones had already been done in the global, but here they are exported for the namespace. But that was all done by the parser. So all the rest of this stuff, you know, the thousands of lines here. Uh, is all done. Great! I think that's probably all you need to know about the index um, definitions file. <laughs> Super. Once again, in the README, there's instructions on how to remove the globals from that if you decide to use the Zim type space with only the namespace and, and not the globals. Just uh, recall, don't, don't uh, delete the Zim wrap module with Zog and Zid. Those ones are so unique that you know, it's not going to run into any problems there, I'm sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been TypeScript in Zim. You grab the zip file, you uh, found out how to set the settings in Atom in five minutes. We talked about how to edit, start editing here in the TypeScript file, and you'll find that anything we do, if we want to make a new rectangle, bar rect is oh of data type rectangle is equal to a new rectangle like that and i don't know what i put in there so i kind of take a look at it and go oh i need a width and a height then a color so a width a height and a color 100 comma 100 and um green like that Ooh. So we go frame.green. Now frame.green doesn't look like a string, but it returns a string, so um, that's fine. And the green is uh, on the frame, otherwise we couldn't do this kind of stuff. So if you try and do another uh, name in there. And we can then dot add to uh, the stage like so. And we save that up. Now do you remember what we do? How do we see it now? Because if we, we go, we've saved it, if we go off here and run it, view and open a browser. I don't see it. So what we need to do is sit in the TypeScript file, go F6, and then we come back here and, well, I'm refreshing the browser. So we're going to go uh, refresh in the browser. And there she is, a green a rectangle, 100 by 100, sitting on the stage. So that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm inventor Dan Zen taking a look at TypeScript with 6.9. So by the time Zim 7 comes along, Zim Hep, we'll have uh, TypeScript out there in the right place uh, where everybody in the world can find it. Teachers, I had a uh, teacher requesting it about a year ago, and then he volunteered to help, and then we lost track, and I totally lost track of where he is. And I've had three or four people just recently on GitHub and in the... Uh, in the Zim Slack channel asking for typings. And so we got that turned around in less than a week for them. Cool. Ciao. All the best.